What makes a personal statement good enough to get into Cambridge? If you're new here, my name's Francis. I did psychological and behavioral sciences at Emmanuel College, Cambridge. Today, I'm interviewing one of my friends who went to Emmanuel with me about her personal statement. She did natural sciences and graduated with a first. I think objectively, she wrote an unreal personal statement. I think it contains a lot of advice that applies to any subject and not just natural sciences. So without further ado, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Poppy. I went to Emmanuel College where I studied natural sciences. I specialise more in the physics side. Fiznatsky is what people like to call it. And uh, who are you? Sorry. Uh, I'm Francis. We, uh, wait, I'm, I'm a bit confused. We went to Emmanuel College together? Oh, you did as well. That's hilarious. I, I, just, been, I must have never met you. We've been friends for like five years now. It's, not ringing any bells, sorry. Went to some formals together. You might be getting me mixed up. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure just seeing someone around counts as friendship, Francis. <laughs> thanks for submitting your personal statement to me. I think it'd be good if we perhaps pulled it up and had a read through it together. Sounds great. Just to start with, I think it'd be good to do a bit of background. So where did you apply? Like, you applied to obviously natural sciences at Cambridge. Did you apply to natural sciences at all five unis or? Yes, yeah, so it's a bit of a mix of courses. I actually only applied to four unis, natural sciences at Cambridge. I applied for natural sciences at Durham as well. And then I applied for physics at Manchester and St. Andrews. How many offers did you get? Did you nail off? all four? I think I did get all four offers, yes. Because you applied to physics at some unis and natural sciences at others, would you say that you wrote this personal statement just thinking about like natural sciences in general or were you going into it like I'm basically doing a physics personal statement? Yeah, I approached it really as a physics personal statement. I mean, that was my main interest anyway. And that was kind of what most of the stuff that I'd done that I could talk about was centered around. So mm. to a certain extent, it was natural that that was the focus. But I think also, obviously, for the ones that you're just applying for physics at, there's no point talking about your interest in chemistry specifically. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if you want to, that's great. But I, I didn't think that that was a, a key focus. But the thing that was very useful for Cambridge is that they let you submit a sort of supplementary thing called the SAQ. You can have an extra sort of couple of hundred words that you can talk about why the Cambridge course specifically is really good for you or why you're a great candidate for the Cambridge course. And so that was what I used to talk about my kind of broader interest in sciences and why I wanted to do natural sciences specifically rather than just doing physics. I remember the SAQ now. It's like <laughs> your chance to simp for Cambridge. Basically, words. yes. <laughs> like, I love your course. I love your uni so much. So what process did you follow Like writing the personal statement? Do you remember when you started writing it or how many drafts you took to get to this pristine finished product. I first started writing a personal statement draft sort of at the start of the summer of year 12. Around that kind of timeline, I did a first draft. I think it was yeah. quite useful to do it before that summer because it helped to identify kind of gaps <laughs> in, in what I had to talk about. The process that I started with really was just writing down a list. Everything I'd ever done, everything I'd ever read that could be relevant, every talk that I'd seen or you know video that I'd watched or just everything that I could possibly include that might be relevant. Yeah. And then kind of sitting down with that piece of paper of just a list of random things and thinking about what were the most key to me. Anything you put on a personal statement could be asked in interview. So you want to have things to talk about that, that you're excited to talk about too. You don't want to maybe oversell yourself and write down about the stuff you're not interested in. Like exactly, really just yeah. trying to take boxes and then in the interview they ask you about it and it's, it's curtains. Um, yeah, exactly. You cobbled a draft together with this list of things. How much did your first draft resemble your final draft? I think it probably changed quite a lot. I think the kind of overall structure stayed the same. The narrative through the through the personal statement, I guess. The plot line, yeah. The plot line, exactly. Yeah. I think the main difference was just slimming stuff down, making the language as concise as possible so that I could fit in as much content as I could. And I used the SAQ to add in a couple of extra like, like a book that I'd read that was more on the broader science side rather than physics. So do we want to read this out together? 
Um, do you want Synchronized. to? Synchronized. I am fascinated by the workings of the universe, from simple mechanical interactions to great astronomical phenomena. The evolving nature of science draws me to it, as there will always be new ways to apply knowledge, discoveries to be made, and theories to be formed. Everything I learn contributes to my growing understanding of how the world works. The pursuit of a complete understanding drives my desire to study physics. How do you feel having your personal statement read back to you? It's okay. It's okay. That's I'm... good. I think I cringe at mine. I think it's That's easy to sign. have a very cringy first sentence in particular. I think mm. mine was quite inoffensive, I would say. I think what I was yeah. trying to do with the first paragraph was just genuinely express why I wanted to study physics. My um denied between doing physics and engineering because I was quite interested in both originally. Right. And these were the actual reasons why I like settled on physics. I guess I was just trying to be true to myself. Is there anything from this intro do you think that people applying to any subject could apply? I think getting across your motivation, something that you want to be very clear from the get-go. You want to try and have a, a catchy or sort of vaguely attention grabbing first sentence without it being too extreme, I would say. Ever since I was a child, I've wanted to be a natural uh, scientist. Yeah. I think I see you've avoided if you can that. avoid the cliches, then that is good too. Yeah. And how far are you along in your pursuit of a, a complete understanding? Do you have complete understanding now? On like the brain memes, I'm like midway. I see. I'm like <laughs> light exploding, exploding brain, but not yet elevated. You know? Not where he's like in the air, like meditating yeah. with like the universe <laughs> spinning around him. So paragraph two, I enjoy keeping up to date with scientific developments and regularly read Physics World, A New Scientist. I found the detection of gravitational waves especially exciting in its validation of Einstein's theories. Inspired by this, I attended a lecture day on topics including relativity, black holes and dark matter, where Dr. Stephen Fairhurst, a LIGO data analyst, spoke. I found it intriguing when he compared the elastic moduli of diamond, 1,200 gigapascals, 1,200 gigapascals to that of space-time, 10 to the power of 24 gigapascals, to explain why gravitational waves are so weak. I previously considered space-time to be less tangible, so it was remarkable to see that it is quantifiable and can be likened to normal materials. Let's just sit with that for a few seconds. Keeping up to date with scientific developments, firstly. I mean, I think that sentence, what I really wanted to talk about was the talks that I've been to. Being able to talk about new scientists and physics world was kind of a useful extra thing that I could throw in as an introduction to mm. the other part. I think it's a nice, the way you've kind of segued into your attending lecture days, because you're like, oh, I was just humbly reading some <sighs> magazines. And then I thought I will explore this interest further and take mm. myself along to a lecture day. I guess you've pulled out some you found interesting from it as well. And not just said, I read this, like, take me at my word for it. You've you've included I've, receipts. I've read every copy since 2010. <laughs> Please test me. This lecture day, when did you go to that? Sometime in 2016. I can't remember exactly when it was. So was it the summer after year 12? Probably around that summer. Yeah, it was brilliant to be fair. It was actually genuinely really, really interesting. Really? So that was a fun thing to be able to talk about. And yeah. I knew that if they asked me about it in an interview, I'd be able to talk about it passionately. Did you get asked um, about any of this in an interview? No, they didn't ask me a single question about my personal statement. I think some people get asked about their personal statements, so it's definitely not a yeah. write whatever you want kind of situation. You have to assume but... that you will be asked. When you're writing yes. your personal statement, you have to assume that you will be asked about every single thing that you put. Definitely. What is LIGO as a non-natural <laughs> non scientist? I actually can't remember what it stands for right now. <laughs> it's just really awkward. Is it the, uh, let's think, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory? <laughs> Don't play with me, France. <laughs> LIGO oh, nice. is basically the experiment that first detected gravitational waves. Oh, that's kind of sick. It is actually quite sick. You previously considered space time to be less tangible. I feel like with that horrendous take, like who who would who would think that about space time? But saying that I've previously considered this idea and now I think this, it shows that you are like open to new ideas. I don't think they're looking for someone who like knows everything. It's actually not a weakness to say, I previously held this idea and now I think this, like after yeah. doing my own learning. One other thing that I was advised, I remember getting feedback on um, from people who looked at my personal statement was to name drop. So if there's right. anyone that you met, you know, listened to a talk from, read a book of, whatever it is, if there's someone in the science community or academic community in whatever subject you're applying for that you can say specifically, then it's worth mm. dropping that name in there. Anything else you want to say about that paragraph? I guess one other thing is that 
The talk that I went to touched on a lot of complicated science, which I didn't at all understand. I mean, I don't think I even covered certain of those concepts in my master's degree at Cambridge. Really? What I tried to highlight is that I could take something from it that maybe I could link more to the science that I had studied and sort of was still interested to learn. Yeah, I think when I was writing mine, on one hand, I was wondering, should I be trying to impress the admissions people by flexing some knowledge of uh, a niche concept in my subject but it's like using flamboyant words isn't it yeah you can kind of see through that really you're applying because you don't know everything about natural sciences not because you already exactly. do you know you're there to learn a willingness to learn is a big part of what they're looking for. All right, next paragraph. So this paragraph is like exploring your concrete interest in science, like entering competitions and touching grass, leaving your house to like actually do things. Through entering an essay on invisibility cloaks for the Newnham Essay Prize, I explored physics applications. It was striking how interdisciplinary the sciences are on a practical level. The most promising prototypes use metamaterials, allowing scientists to manufacture material properties unseen in nature, such as negative refractive indices. I am fascinated by the possibilities presented by such fast developing fields, where the main limitation is our ability to manufacture on a nano scale. Talk to me about invisibility cloaks. When can I get my hands on one? I'm not going to pretend I remember all of the science. <laughs> there. I'm not going to lie. Is Newnham Essay Prize like Newnham College, Cambridge? Yeah, it was Newnham College, Cambridge. I think for quite a few subjects, different Cambridge or Oxford colleges will have essay competitions. And they're yeah. quite an easy way, not easy, like it takes a lot of time to put the essay together, but it's sort of like to add on your personal statement. I know you did the EQ, yeah. I didn't have that. Um, so I wanted to have- Oh, you watched my video. Things. Also watched your video. But yeah, I wanted to have some other things that I could talk about, which is why I, I entered in that. They had a few different titles that you could choose from. And so I chose to write one about invisibility cloaks and whether they were scientifically possible. It's a nice like subtle flex, I think, just to drop a Cambridge college in. I didn't even think about entering essay competition I always saw that on the walls in school and I was like, that's mm. not for me, that's for the people who can actually write words. But yeah, anyone can enter, can't they? So it's good to yeah. put that in. I mean, I didn't win anything. I don't think my essay was brilliant, but it was something that I could say that I'd done and I did enjoy doing it and found it interesting. So, What did you mean by interdisciplinariness of sciences on a practical level? I guess that was maybe a bit of a natural sciences plug, um, yeah. sort of showing that I had some broader interests beyond just physics specifically. Yeah. In this instance, a lot of the work is about like engineering and our ability to engineer the specific materials and like nanostructures that we're trying to create. So that brings in a lot of engineering and mm. then also material science and other things. But I think that's the case in so much of research, particularly where it's um, got any kind of practical element. There's all sorts of different sciences that can feed in, so. Yeah, always good to include in a, a natural sciences application. My love of independent research was boosted during a week's work experience in the theory of condensed matter group at the Cavendish Laboratory, Cambridge. I assessed the weather forecasting abilities of 19th century storm glass through detailed statistical analysis of a year's data. It was particularly interesting to study a historic device rather than a futuristic one. I found the analytical process of investigation rewarding and later continued with further data analysis and research, which I entered into a school essay competition. This improved my skills in research, analysis and communication of complex ideas. Why is the word brilliant come through in the text? Did I send you like a version oh. of comments or something? Oh, well, actually the sponsor of today's video is Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant is a website offering a number of online courses in maths, science, and computer science. From trying it myself, I love how interactive Brilliant is. It constantly keeps me focused through hands-on activities like literally testing code within a lesson, which also helps me to remember what I've learned. There are so many courses to choose from that can help anyone level up their STEM knowledge. Whether you're looking for a foundational understanding of algorithms or calculus, or equally if you want to dip your toes into more advanced content like neural networks. Doing just a little bit of learning every day can have a massive impact. To get started, for free, visit brilliant.org slash Francis Madden or click the link in the description where you will get 20% off an annual premium membership. Thank you very much, Poppy. So <laughs> absolutely played me there. These two examples that I that I was talking about, I guess one was a more kind of futuristic technology that we're still working out ways to do it. Whereas the storm glass is something that was used on like Charles Darwin's his explorations and the beagle. I guess the sentence where I say it was interesting to study a historic device rather than a futuristic one was trying to bring out that kind of comparison because obviously like you don't that. spend all of a science degree or all of any degree looking at the cutting edge stuff. A lot of it is understanding like the basics too. And how did you get your hands on this 
work experience at the theory of condensed matter group because i guess that's again a bit of cambridge experience in there yeah the cavendish laboratory is quite a big deal right yeah i mean the cavendish laboratory yeah. is the research department for physics at cambridge it's yeah, where I so no better degree. experience to get really yeah exactly it was definitely the the most relevant and and useful to have on there i think experience that i had i literally just found something on the cavendish website and applied with an online form and we were kind of supported by phd students to do a research project which we then presented at the end of the week to to the research group yeah so very accessible at actually very accessible work experience to someone applying like yeah just fill that form rather than having to know someone it's actually not completely impossible to get experience at cambridge in your subject before the course like i did that myself because i applied to sutton trust they didn't actually let me onto sutton trust they let me onto this like experience uh pbs psychological and behavioral sciences at cambridge which was just like two days one in july one in august before year 13 Mm. Uh, just to like dip my toes in the subject so I think for a lot of subjects there are opportunities if you just put a bit of time into doing research you can actually find something and you've managed to drop Cambridge essentially twice in one paragraph here. I mean I think experience like this that you can get it doesn't need to be at Cambridge it's still really useful to have it shows that you understand what an actual research environment looks like You've Mm. actually been in a lab, you've met PhD students, which is maybe where you would potentially be in a few years time. Um, So I think all of that is good to be able to talk about, regardless of what university it's affiliated with. Yeah. And now it has been a few years time. Uh, Where are you? (laughs) I decline to answer. (laughs) The thing about doing work experience like that is you know that the work you did is 100% relevant to the course you'll be studying. Acquainting yourself with a, a university research process, like in, exactly. on the ground, in the lab. And more independently and sort mm. of more large scale than anything that you do at school most of the time. Like if you do an yeah. experiment at school, you do it in one, like an hour lesson, and then maybe you do like a half hour homework on it afterwards, um, doing something where you're spending a whole week going through data, working out what to do with it, presenting it, writing it, up all of that is quite good anything else for that paragraph i guess just like Uh, highlighting the stuff that the stuff that you contributed the the tangible skills that you developed Um, yeah it's not like just saying i am interested it's showing it like that's what's actually valuable and then highlighting like what i actually gained from that experience and why that makes me a better candidate Mm, yeah that last sentence you just reeled off like a bunch of very useful skills for the course so experiences and reflections yeah exactly a good combo not just listing your qualities or just listing experiences like a bit of both kind of bringing whatever you're talking about bring it back to why that makes you more interested more motivated and a better candidate for the course the next paragraph you are talking about some reading during my time at the cavendish i felt honored to have the opportunity to talk to scientists there i enjoyed learning a bit about quantum physics an area in which many specialized this led me to read qed the strange theory of light and matter by richard Feynman. i was struck by chapter two which outlines how the basic behaviors of light like reflection and refraction can be predicted using quantum electrodynamics. It renewed my appreciation of the complex mechanisms behind seemingly simple interactions, challenging me to question how other phenomena can be reassessed using quantum mechanics. You know the sentence, I felt honored to have the opportunity to talk to scientists there. How'd you feel about brown nosing? I feel like what I was trying to say was not just that I went there, I did my work and then I left, but that I really mm. tried to make the most of all of the opportunities that were presented to me while I was at the Cavendish. Yeah, not just yeah. my work, but like learning more broadly about what other people were doing. It is an honour. The first sentence is a nice link, isn't it, between the it's previous paragraph quiet. and this one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And being able to say not just I did the experience at the Cavendish, but I took something from it. I wanted to learn more afterwards. So yeah. there is a plot, really, isn't there? Because like you've gone there from like, humble magaz- magazines to reading this book. How did you come to choose this book for your personal statement? I actually can't remember where I found. Was it like a reading list? I don't think I got it off a specific reading list. I'm sure I found it recommended somewhere. Because I Um, saw another video and someone said they read this book as well. Yeah, yeah. This book is quite a classic one that I think quite a few people read and put Mm. on their personal statements. I didn't necessarily know that at the time, but I loved it. It was like a super, super interesting book. Like before you've said you've read the book and then I did some additional reflection about reflection in this case, uh, literally. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) 
<laughs> talked about a specific chapter, which I think can be a good thing to do in personal statements when you're talking about a book, to be able to have something more concrete that you can prepare to talk about again in case they ask you. Yeah, um, rather you don't have to prepare the whole book. Exactly, you don't have to prepare yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's quite a useful tactic that I found. That was the chapter that I was most interested in and I guess was what I could tie most to the science that I had learned so far, like, mm. you know, reflection and refraction, which you learn about at school, just sort of challenging my understanding of that, I guess, which, like we said earlier, is sort of a key skill of studying university, being able to change your mind and, and reassess your, your knowledge and understanding of things. You've put that you have been challenged to question how other phenomena can be reassessed using quantum mechanics. So I think even though you don't have an answer in this personal statement, you're sharing that you have a broad mindset towards the subject, I think. Yeah, a curiosity and, and eagerness to, to learn. Yeah. All right. Second to last paragraph seems to be your trophy cabinet of all your fabulous achievements during school. You don't need to read through them all. Oh, we do. I find solving a difficult problem or understanding a demanding topic highly rewarding. I especially enjoy the more thought-provoking problems presented in extracurricular challenges and have won awards this year in the Mathematical Olympiad for Girls, Distinction. Senior Math Challenge, Gold. Intermediate Grey Kangaroo, Merit. Cambridge Chemistry Challenge, Gold. And the BPHO, AS Physics Challenge, Silver, Best in School. My enthusiasm for science leads me to promote it to other students as editor of the physics section of my school science magazine, as a physics mentor and tutor to younger girls at school, and as a volunteer to the Ogden Trust Extreme Physics for Year 10 students. Again, you've started the paragraph by saying you find solving difficult problems rewarding and then you show that you have done this extensively. What stands out to you reading this paragraph? I feel like I used a lot of words listing names of things that I probably didn't need to. You've done it concisely, I think. I did it as concisely as I could. You've kind of put yourself across, is what I feel. Like I read mm. it feeling like it's your personal statement rather than a generic one. It's important to, as much as you can, try and put yourself across as a person yeah. uh, over and above your interest for the subject. I like, think trying to be like genuine about what you're interested in and what you're excited about and what you've enjoyed can only be a good thing. Yeah. That process of finding what you enjoy can also help you understand more what you want to study and where you'd want to study it too. Well, all these like challenges, opportunities you found through school or were some of them ones that you found externally? From memory, they were all things that came through school mm. one way or another. Some of the others were maybe things that we got an email saying, if anybody wants to do this, then let us know. I can't remember specifically. You can put experiences you've done for one day, even if it's just like one lecture, as you've mentioned earlier. Yeah. And it actually does help you look more unique than you know, someone who's just done their A-levels. Even though you might have found out about these things through school, I think it still makes you look like you've gone beyond school in mm. a way. And I think you've you put across as well like your own like independence and responsibility by talking about the school magazine that you are editor of and then being um, a shining light, a role model to the next generation. These I didn't talk about more because actually they were more smaller things that I did. Mm. Um, being the editor of my school science magazine, I think we had like one publication in the year. That I, edit <laughs> I edited like one. But it was a banger. Went into it. <laughs> it wasn't like a huge thing that I had a whole bunch to say about, but just shows like Again, I'm keen. I'm, you know, not just doing it in lessons. I'm doing it outside. I'm interested to learn more and stuff like that. For a magazine, even if you have published one uh, edition, they don't need to know that. Yeah. You, you are just the editor. Like, you see this on LinkedIn as you grow up. Like, everyone's CVs look unbelievably impressive, but... I'm sure if you dig a bit deeper into most people's experiences, then you see it's been worded in a way that implies more... Uh, a lot of responsibility, yeah. More responsibility. I think that's why the process that I went through of starting with just a list of everything that I've ever done was mm. a useful starting point because you can bring out things, whether they're like subject related or not, that maybe wouldn't be the first thing to come to mind. Even if it wasn't physics related, if I'd done some kind of essay competition in a different subject, that would still be cool to be able to talk about that I did that, mm. um, even though it wouldn't necessarily seem obvious at first. When I applied to PBS, I wasn't doing psychology, so I put like my maths A-level in. It doesn't really matter if it's different subjects. You can tie it in. Well, just you talk about the skills that you gained. Yeah, exactly. I think I just talked about hard work. Right, the final paragraph. Ah, yes, the extracurriculars. So, my intellectual curiosity and desire to succeed extend beyond the classroom 
I enjoy the performing arts, completing grade 8 violin and Lambda grade 7 this year, playing in my school orchestra and taking part in two plays. I captain my lacrosse team and in completing my Gold Duke of Edinburgh award, I thrive when presented with multiple simultaneous challenges and will approach my undergraduate degree with the same motivation and commitment. What I was going to say is what your first sentence is, which is that you've shown your intellectual curiosity and desire extend beyond the classroom. <laughs> Did you think about how much of the personal statement to dedicate to this section? The impression that I got is that if you're not applying to Oxbridge, people tend to put more into the extracurricular section, particularly universities like Durham, I think are quite big on the extracurricular side and sort of knowing that you'll right. be a, a kind of active part of the community and, and whatever it is that you're interested in. But Durham actually let you submit a separate personal statement for them from memory. Since I knew that Cambridge was my first choice, I kept it a bit leaner because that was what I was trying to market myself towards a little bit more. I kept it a bit more concise and didn't allocate too much of the personal statement to it. You've also drawn it back to studying at uni. Cambridge aren't really bothered about what your extracurricular activities are as far as I understand. Yeah. Um, but you've Unless tied you're it back. A rower. Unless you're a rower, they <laughs> they love rowing. I think it's also great if you're an org if you play the organ. That's the other thing I heard. Oh, if you're an organ every, player. Every college has to have like an organ scholar in every year or every other year. But in Emmanuel College, the organ scholar gets such a good room yeah. every year. It's like a room just for the organ scholar. But you um, do then have to play the organ at every single like service, choir practice etc yeah. forever probably so. but it's worth it for that free pass into cambridge yeah where you also have to be good at your subject <laughs> and play the organ to an incredibly high standard i think thriving with multiple simultaneous challenges is especially useful for cambridge because you are multiply simultaneously challenged i think yeah i'm not sure i would say anymore that i thrive in that circumstance <laughs> Thrive is already quite Thrive a, is a strong, strong word. word. Maybe school me was just superhuman or something. Me with like one challenge now is like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was it about year 13? Like you could just take on the world and then... Yeah. At uni, it's like getting up at 8.50 a.m. is like human rights level. <laughs> atrocity. I think doing any kind of particular science-y subject at university, you will have quite a lot of contact hours. You'll have your labs, you'll have your lectures, you'll have like work that you need to do outside both of those. And also you'll probably be one of, wanting to try and have a life outside of your course as well. Yeah, being able to show that you have the capacity to not just do that, but like make the most of it and enjoy it is good. Well, that rounds off a stellar personal statement. Reading it now, would you change anything looking back drastically? No, I, I think I'm pretty happy with it on the whole, you know, given what I knew and my understanding of, of physics and what university was like and all of that at the time. I'm like pretty proud of it. For the level of development your prefrontal cortex was at, I think you've done a fantastic job. Thanks. So I will admit you to my imaginary Cambridge College. <laughs> who did you get to check over your personal statement? I think just sort of anyone I could think of who might be just might anyone be on the street to, to help out with it. Um, yeah, I I wouldn't remember the exact list. Definitely did mm. a lot with my mum, like going through it, and then like physics teachers at school. But I probably did get some friends to look at it as well. Or the more feedback that you can get, the better, because people do say different things, and some people the feedback that they give just isn't useful. There was definitely feedback that I got that I didn't include at all. If three people say the same thing that you should change, then you know you should probably change that. A crowdsourced personal statement. <laughs> Crowdsourced, yeah. Do you have any general advice for personal statements? Whichever uni that you're applying to that's like your, your first choice or your first few choices, trying to get a sense of what they want to know about you, what they're looking for in a statement, because mm. it is different between different universities. So if you know someone that's applied there before or gone there or can talk to a, a student there or even just like emailing someone random, I don't know, you might hear back, trying to get a sense of what they want and then putting across all of the things that are good about you, that you like, that you're excited about, that you want to do at university in the best way that you can. Agreed. Thank you very much for your time, Poppy. Uh, we'll be back, getting back to you in a few weeks with the outcome of your application. <laughs> I look forward to hearing from you. <laughs> and uh, do you have any questions for me, Poppy? No. It's a great astronomical phenomena. Did I say that right? Yeah, really big <laughs> words. Are we saying that like... I don't in, know what I was the video? saying, France. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> the question I ask myself every day. So did you put much thought into your... No, that sounds offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hello there. Would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> astronomical. Astro. Astronomical. It is, I said it right, didn't I? Yeah, you said it right both <laughs> times. I feel like I say astronomical. No, you're not. Hi hey, there. my name. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we say hi at the same time? <laughs>